Hey there everybody, it's Lance with Love to Hate where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And in this special video, I'm going to be talking to you about the one to four player game from Maj from Road to Infamy Games. Fromage is a game in which you are going to be making cheese. It is a worker placement game and it is coming to crowdfunding here in the very near future. So make sure to check out that link down below in the description of this video after you've watched it. Now I don't actually have a copy of Fromage here to talk to you all about, but I did get to play this game at Gen Con and I wanted to put together this video real quick before the campaign launched so that I could get this out there to you all who might be interested in it. And I do want to let you guys know that we are going to get a copy sent to us at some point so that I can try this out with Sam. So I do just want to be upfront with you all out there. Now these are my honest thoughts. This is not a sponsored video, but like I said, I did get to sit down with the Road to Infamy guys and try this game out. Now this is a game for one to four players from designers Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett and it takes about 30 to 45 minutes and I'll tell you that my particular game took about 40 minutes to play it was four players now that didn't include the teach um, we did have the designers of the game right there with us telling us about the game and so uh, that did help in learning the game obviously but I will say I think that this game is maybe about a 15 minute teach or so it is definitely Road to Infamy's uh, most most heavy game uh, you know that's not saying a whole lot because a lot of the games that they've made have definitely been on the lighter weight uh, end of the spectrum but this is I would say definitely a fully medium weight game it does have some uh, extra level of thinking and planning ahead that you are going to be doing in this particular game now let me share with you real briefly the overview of this game now as I mentioned at the top of the video it is a worker placement game and with that you are going to be placing out one of your three workers. You only have three workers and you have several wedges of cheese in your player color. Now on your turn, you're going to have one of the four quadrants or wedges of the circular board in front of you. That's right, this is a giant circular board. I shouldn't say giant, but it's a bigger circular board. And this board is going to turn so that always one wedge of the pie is going to be facing you. And that's gonna change every turn of the game. And so whatever wedge is facing you, you're going to have one of the four things that you're trying to do with the, the different regions of the board, as well as the center part. There's going to be two different parts that are in front of you. One is going to give you resources, and so some, some of those are going to be uh, animals that you are going to need to progress along a track and a, on a board that's in front of you for maximum points. But then another one is going to be, another res resource is going to be uh, different types of berries that you're gonna be using to create different types of cheeses because certain spots on the board require you to have those uh, berries in order to make that specific type of cheese. Uh, you might also be trying to get buildings that you can build on your player board which are going to give you access to special actions and bonuses that you can get throughout the course of the game. So you have that as the center part and again there's go always going to be one of four options facing you that you could choose on your turn but then you're going to have the larger part of the board that's facing you and each wedge has its own like mini game going on. There's going to be one part that is going to be area control. There's going to be another part that's going to be order fulfillment. There's going to be another part in which you are trying to complete rows or columns or just have the, the largest connected area of your presence on the board. And so it's like these four little mini games at play going on with this, but you need your workers to be able to do well in all of those things, as well as balancing out when you're going to use a worker for the bigger board or when you're going to go to the center and get resources or when you might do both at the same time. Now, what's really innovative about this particular game, other than the turning of the board and only playing the wedge that's right in front of you, is that there's a couple of things. 
The first is, is that this is a dual layer board in which your pieces sit into the board. And the reason why that's important is because your workers aren't going to come back to you immediately. They're only going to come back to you once they are fully facing you as the turning of the board will turn them 90 degrees. And depending on where you're placing them on the board, some actions are going to tie up your workers for longer at maximum three turns to get bigger rewards, bigger benefits, better cheeses. And the way that this has worked is so that when you use one of those spots, your workers going to be facing directly to your left so that when you turn the board one click after the, the next round it'll be facing directly away from you and then the next round after that it's going to be facing directly to your right and then finally one more turn after that it will be facing you so that you can take it off the board and be able to use it again whereas the weakest actions on the board are going to have your workers facing directly to your right so that after only one turn they will be facing at you hopefully that makes sense and definitely check out that campaign page to get a full a better idea of how that works but that tying up of your workers is really unique and innovative plus it goes along with the theme of trying to make cheese because it takes time for cheese to to uh, be made and and make it so that it's edible for you to eat so uh, it definitely works with the theme there on that on that thinking but another thing about this board is that it is fully module. So you can take these sections out and move them in any order that you possibly want. And you can turn the center part of the board as well and, and line it up with different wedges so that your, your choices of resources with whatever wedge of the, the mini game board is going on. That those choices can be switched and altered up however you want it, which is going to give you lots of different combinations in order to play this game. Lots of replayability when you're talking about that factor alone. Now, let's talk about the actual gameplay experience with this one. What I found to be so enthralling with this game is that your workers are tied up and the board is turning and you're not constantly just playing on the same board every turn. You're only going to see that board one out of every four turns. And so you do have to see, well, what's the next board that's coming? What's the board that's directly away from me? What workers do I need for those boards to get the best actions on those spots? Because let's take, for instance, the area control board, for instance. You're trying to control these different regions by gaining presence in these different little cities on the board. And in order to get certain cities, you need to place a certain worker. You have three different types of workers, you've yeah. been, and they're all different types of cheeses. But if I'm really wanting to gain control of that city that touches three different regions, that's going to require my strongest worker. If it's already tied up because of one of the other actions that I've done the last two turns, I'm not going to have it for that. So I've got to plan ahead to know I need to save this worker for when that section of the board comes back around to me so that I can use it for that. While all the while you're still hoping somebody's not taking the thing that you're planning on doing once the board gets back to you. So there's a lot of layers of thinking going on with this game watching what other people are doing on their turns. Now you would think that that would mean that this is going to be a long and slow and heavy game and experience with this one and it's quite the opposite. As I've already said this game is 30 to 45 minutes. My particular game was 40 minutes long and it was snappy. Turns were going like that so fast and, and uh, that we had to use these tokens to indicate when we were ready to go because we would just we would go and we'd do our things and we would just be sitting there and looking around and we'd realize oh nobody's doing anything because we're already all done and so we had to use these tokens to indicate yeah I'm done and I'm ready to move on to the next turn. So turns were lightning fast in this game. Now I suppose you could have some AP and that might slow some things down but you can really only do with what the wedge is right in front of you and you can't really worry too much about everything else that's going on because you can't do anything with it yet until it comes back to you so there are some things that lean into this being a faster experienced game and, and people will be going through their turns quite fastly in this game so uh, lots to really enjoy about this particular one I, I really felt like this was a nice step into heavier 
heavier gaming with the Road to Infamy games. You know, they do a lot of lightweight games, and, and I wasn't quite sure how this would be, knowing that this is going to be their crunchiest, heaviest, most Euro-type experience, but man, they did an awesome job with this one. Um, the prototype that I got to play was just top-notch production value already. I can't wait to see what the final copy is going to be. Um, Everything about this game was a lot of fun, and I didn't even win this game. I got second in the game, the, the pictures that you've seen there, and uh, had a fantastic time even in a losing effort. So it um, does take a little bit of needing to understand what every part of the board does, so I don't know that this is going to be, you know, gateway-esque type game like what you maybe are familiar with Road to Infamies for having done in the past with... Uh, you know, Canvas being a fantastic gateway game. Um, this is definitely going to be a step up ahead above that, but it, it's not going to be one that's so heavy that I think you shouldn't even try it with maybe a casual gamer. I'm definitely going to try this out with Sam and get her thoughts on it and see what she thinks. But as it is right now, I had a great time with this particular game, and I would highly recommend for you all out there to check out the campaign page because it's one that you definitely don't want to miss out on. The game is from Maj. It's from designers Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossa and from Road to Infamy Games. Again, check out that link down below in the description, and please leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified of all of our great new content. I'm Lance, and this is Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.